Good morning. Is that better? Well, welcome to St. Andrews on this uh, glorious day, and a very special welcome to Gary and Bob and Craig, and to Alex and Rob and Marg and family friends to be part of this baptism service, this dual baptism service, later on this morning. It's wonderful to be able to be here on this holiday weekend where Canadians celebrate and Americans will be celebrating tomorrow and we can be celebrating today. So with that, if you're able, I invite you to stand and join in with our call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Shout joyfully to the Lord, your God. Glorify Him with your praise. Our heart is part of peace. Because of your great power, your opponents cringe before you. Come and see what our God has done, what awesome things He has done for us. Let the whole world bless our God and sing His praise. For our lives are in His hands, and He keeps our feet from stumbling. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, which is 321, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. shown towards us generation after generation and for the compassion you shower upon us day after day. You alone are our God and we are your people. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thank you for the way which you have revealed yourself to us through the wonders of creation, through the kindness of a stranger, through moments of seeming serendipity. 
Above all, you have revealed yourself through Jesus Christ, your Son, and through him we have come to know you and to love you. We have seen your love and mercy in action. We have caught a glimpse of your heart, and we have heard the call to follow. Continue to reveal yourself to us as we worship. May your Holy Spirit open our minds and hearts to your presence among us and to all that occurs in this service, for we desire to know you better. Come, Holy Spirit, encourage, challenge, uplift and inspire. This we ask in the authority of Jesus the Messiah. Amen. And let us now continue with a prayer of confession, which this week comes from Psalm 52. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with a willing spirit. Amen. Hear this good news. God is slow to anger and quick to forgive and filled with loving kindness. God is faithful even when we fail. Therefore be at peace for God's grace for by God's grace we are saved through all that was accomplished through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Messiah. Believe in that good news and be set free to live as children of God. Thanks be to God. And now we come to our time for announcements. Um, you will have those in the bulletins. I encourage you to take them away. And uh, those at home, the bulletin was sent with the live stream link for this service. Let me just go through some of them. Our study group, uh, the New Testament You Never Knew, which is a DVD series by N.T. Wright and Michael Bird, continues tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 in the basement of the church hall. And it explores the life of the early church. So do come and enjoy that with us. And on a mundane but much more important notice in some people's mind is we have our decluttering of our church, which has been long overdue. We've meant to do this even before COVID began and it got delayed. So there are many underused items throughout the church in the church uh, hall, uh, including books that are needing a new home. If it's not your home, they will be removed. And so this is your last week to have a hunt around and see if there are things that you would like. Um, and if you have any questions about whether this item can be taken away, ask Jim or Len or myself. On the back page of the bulletin, there's also the uh, treasurer's announcement for May, uh, up to until the end of May. So let me update you with that. Um, as you can see, our expenses are a little over our budget, which is not surprising, but not too bad. It shows that the budget was decent. However, our income is significantly lower than projected. In fact, our expenses are 17,200 more than our income uh, this far during the year. You remember that uh, in the last two years, we have received some government subsidies which were very helpful to us as a church or as a charity, but we will not be receiving those this year. And then moving on, again, it's mentioned on the back uh, of the bulletin, we're looking for volunteers to help us managing the weekly bulletin, the PowerPoint, John is doing that today, but it's also prepared during the week, and the church's Facebook and web page. So if you're interested in uh, helping with this, uh, leading with this, then do let me know as soon as possible. Now I said at the beginning that this is the Canada Day uh, long weekend, and so now I invite you to stand and face the flag and we will sing the first verse of the National Anthem. Thank you. 
And now I will ask Kathy and Mary to receive our offerings. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism, into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The next reading is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 28. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female. For you are all one in Jesus Christ. The last reading is from Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Thus ends today's readings. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Liz. And our next hymn, for which we remain seated, is 569, O Jesus, I Have Promised. People inside and outside of the church find the idea and meaning of baptism to be very confusing. It's made worse by the fact that different Christian denominations practice baptism differently. Some churches will only baptize adults. We will baptize all ages here. And some practice baptism by full immersion and others only sprinkle tiny amounts of water as if it was being rationed. But a friend of mine joked, it doesn't matter how much water is used as long as the head gets wet. In addition to those obvious differences to the practice of baptism, it's easy to be muddled as to what baptism means or does. And that's what I want to talk about today. You will have noticed that the Nicene Creed has, up until now, started every major clause with the phrase, we believe. Those statements are not only something that we commit to with our minds, but with our hearts, indeed all of our very being. Today we come to the line that says, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And notice that the word uses a different word, namely confess or acknowledge, for this phrase concerning baptism. This implies that baptism is important, 
but it doesn't call for the same degree of commitment. And the principal reason, reason being is that baptism is about the inner life and the practices of the church rather than statements concerning God and the nature of the church as we've been discussing in previous weeks. Now one thing that's surprised me as I've been preparing this sermon series on the creed is how its authors were repeatedly quoting from scriptures. And I have therefore stressed that fact. And again, we see the same thing here. Mark's Gospel states, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And we can therefore see that the Creed's authors were citing Mark. I have a problem with this statement, and I think it's seriously mistaken as it stands. So allow me to explain why. In the very next chapter of Mark, Jesus is accused of blasphemy by stating that he has authority to forgive sins. His critics rightly understood that forgiveness of sin comes from God alone and was through offering sacrifices at the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus is therefore challenging the authority of the temple itself. And soon afterwards, according to Mark, he's a man marked out for death by saying such things. Now, had John the Baptist been actually claiming that his baptism was one of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, then he too would have been considered a blasphemer. Yet Mark and the other Gospel writers make absolutely no reference to that. They revere him as a prophet. Matthew, who had Mark's Gospel in front of him, when he wrote his own words, omits that reference linking John's baptism with forgiveness and states that it was a ritual washing that only signifies repentance. And the word repent means a deliberate U-turn and coming back to diligently following God's ways. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, however, he explicitly links forgiveness with the crucifixion using the words of Jesus from the Last Supper. It was there that he instituted the practice of Holy Communion, saying, Drink from this cup, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. My point then is that our forgiveness, is, our forgiveness right, does not arise from the act of baptism, but through Christ's death on the cross. As we read in Ephesians, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So I, I hope you can now see that it's an important and confusing distinction that needs to be cleaned up. Now that doesn't mean that baptism isn't important. As we heard earlier from Liz, the risen Jesus himself commands his disciples to baptize in the name of the Trinity in the Great Commission. But as we will see in a moment, Christian baptism is more than John's baptism, although it does incorporate John's ritual washing as a public sign of repentance and an embracement of a new ethical orient orientation as the first step in Christian discipleship. Well, having mentioned that, now let's explore the additional riches of Christian baptism. There are many images in the New Testament for baptism, and all of them are important. We all are, after all, using metaphors to describe a profound mystery. I will simply mention two of them, and both are just as relevant for us today as they were in the first century. As we heard from that complicated reading from Romans, baptism is described as a dying and raising with Christ. The descent into the water signifies the Christian's identification with the suffering and death of Jesus the Messiah, whereby the power that sin has on the old way of life is broken, 
and the ascent from the water signifies participation in the new life in the spirit based on the power of the resurrection. It was enacted by the person taking off their old clothing and being baptized naked and as they came out of the river or lake by putting on new clothing symbolizing the leaving of the old self behind and taking on our new identity in the image of Christ. As Paul writes, all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Now it's a relief to us all that we don't baptize naked today. <laughs> Nevertheless, baptism vividly symbolizes that we are now a new creation in Christ. The old is gone and the new life has begun. But that of course doesn't mean that we're instantly perfect or that our future sins don't matter. Rather, that God now sees us as part of the new people of God. Not because of any good deeds that we have done, and not because we followed a series of rules, but because of the faithfulness of Jesus himself. In other words, we are right with God because we trust in the significance of the cross. It's all a matter of God's grace being revealed through Jesus the Messiah. Now in addition to baptism linking us to our dying and raising with Christ, it's also portrayed as a rebirth by the Holy Spirit into the family of God. And this is most vividly expressed in Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, where he says that we must be born again or born from above, or born from the Spirit. Jesus explains that entry into God's kingdom doesn't arise through intellectual illumination, but it's a regeneration by the Holy Spirit. God's unpredictable and mysterious Spirit gives rise to creative acts, including new life, new creation. And so again, we see that this means this new birth is an act of God's grace and not something that we can achieve by human effort. Baptism is, as St. Augustine put it, a visible sign of God's invisible grace. Through this public act, we are being welcomed into a new community of promise, becoming adopted members of a new family, and citizens of God's new society. One of Paul's major theological contributions was to realize that God's new family was to be inclusive. It wasn't just for Jews, but for everyone. He writes, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For in baptism, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abram's family and heirs according to the promise. The shocking power of those all-embracing words cannot be understated. Baptism unites or reconciles whatever society tries to separate by whatever labels we choose. As it says in Ephesians, there is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And Nicene Creed cites this passage in its affirmation, we acknowledge one baptism. And because we believe in one baptism, there's a radical equality amongst the faithful. Amongst other things, that means that the minister is no more Christian than anyone else. Those two features of Christian baptism is what we are celebrating today. John's baptism of repentance is about our initiative and our intention. Christian baptism is about God's initiative revealed through our Saviour Jesus Christ 
and the life-giving Holy Spirit. We baptize in the name of, or in the authority of, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we celebrate divine grace. That being the case, the effectiveness of baptism does not depend upon the holiness of the minister, but only on the faithfulness of God. And note that because we baptize in the name of the Trinity, the person is being initiated into the worldwide church and not simply the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Baptism is, however, not the end of the story, but the beginning of Christian discipleship that lasts a whole lifetime. It's a commission that's not only personal, but as part of the community of God. This is a commitment to a spiritual journey that moves constantly and progressively from slavery to freedom, from fear to boldness, from death to life, from darkness to light, from selfishness to generous love, following the example of our living Lord Jesus and guided by the Holy Spirit. And as we grow in the Spirit, we get a deeper understanding of what we have received from Jesus the Messiah. As it says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, Therefore, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and firm in your faith just as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. All this is what baptism means and does. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen. invite Alex and Rob and Gary and Bob to come to the front. You're the closest to me, okay, unless you all want to get wet. <laughs> I'm going to stand over here. I'm going to uh, read various statements that are uh, part of the liturgy associated with baptism. And you'll hear some of it from before because you'll say, he's just preached on that. So good. <laughs> the other thing that will happen is that I'll be asking Gary and Alex questions and they will affirm their faith. And then later on I'll ask you to stand and you will affirm your faith as the family of God. And then later on I will be doing the baptism. So you have a plan or a roadmap of where we're going. Baptism is a gift from God. With visible signs and words of promise, God moves towards us to claim us as children of the new covenant and members of the household of God. In the sacrament of baptism, the church recognizes God's covenant of grace. We receive God's gift with reverent joy and respond with faith and obedience. Hear the words of the risen Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the close of the age. And remember too the words of Peter on the day of Pentecost. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. So let us take courage. The promises of God are for us. By the waters of baptism, 
and the power of the Holy Spirit, God claims us and calls us each one by name. God unites us to Christ in his death and resurrection and grafts us into the body of Christ as members of the church. God washes us clean by forgiving our sin, commissions us to be a royal priesthood with Christ in the ministry, in his ministry to the world, empowers us to live in newness of life as people of the word, and invites us to be renewed at the Lord's table until we feast with him in glory. As the scriptures remind us, by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is a gift of God. Let us therefore move towards the waters, let us therefore move through the waters, trusting in the faithfulness of God, secure in the love made known in Jesus Christ, confident that the Holy Spirit is acting now to lead us into the new life of love and service in union with Jesus Christ, in whom we become heirs of the covenant. Alex, do you desire to be baptized? I do. Gary, do you desire to be baptized? I do. So I now ask some questions which I ask you both to affirm at the same time. Okay. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, who has been faithful to us in all generations, do you turn away from sin? renounce all evil powers in the world which rebel against God or oppose God's rule of justice and love? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin which separate you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Saviour, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Do you desire independence of the Holy Spirit, to mature as a Christian in the church, to seek the guidance of Christ as you listen for his word, to celebrate his death and life at the table he provides, and to engage in his mission to the world. I do. I invite the congregation to stand. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed and is redeeming all of creation? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the worldwide church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your love you have called us to know you. Let us to trust you and bound our life with yours. Surround Alex and Gary with your love. Protect them both from evil. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and receive them into the family, that they will walk in the way of Christ and grow in the knowledge of your love and continue forever as a servant of Christ. Amen. This is your job. Afterwards. <laughs> and that's your job, Rob. <laughs> I invite you to come forward. Okay. I need to get this right. I don't want to get into trouble. There's certain. Um, Ministers did by saying the wrong word. Anyway, 
All right, I invite you to sort of bend your head slightly forwards, okay? Yvonne Alexandra Edmiston Arpin. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the Spirit of God dwell in you and uphold you now and forever. Amen. Okay. That's going to be good, yeah. Gary Robert Swope. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit of God dwell in you and uphold you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for Alex and for Gary. Loving God, we thank you for this act of obedience where we acknowledge your grace and love for Alex and Gary. We pray that this moment will be powerful for them and for their families and friends. It's a proclamation, it's a witness of what you have done. I ask that you continue to bless them and enrich their lives in every way moving forwards. May their faith deepen, their roots go deep into you. And may they bear fruit of your spirit in their lives. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand. And let us say together, Come, grow with us into Christ, who is our head. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all, and in all. You may be seated. Just wait a moment. I'm going to let you do your rows, but okay. Yeah. Alex, this is for you. This is um, a Bible and your certificate of baptism. Uh, treasure it, enjoy it, and read it. Gary, this is for you. This is a new Bible and your baptism certificate. Enjoy it and read it. This is a, a new translation by uh, John Golden Gate and Tom Wright, N.T. Wright, whose videos we have been watching. And um, it's entitled The Bible for Everyone. So it's a scholarly translation, but in, in more modern English, by an Old Testament scholar and a New Testament scholar. Okay. All right. God bless you. Our next hymn for which we'll remain seated is 521, Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. <laughs>
Gracious God, we thank you for your loving nature and for initiating love towards us and for revealing yourself to all humankind in Jesus Christ. As we have celebrated your grace and love in baptism this morning, so we are reminded of our own baptism, where we again hear the words, You are my beloved child, in you I am well pleased. May we continue to partner with your Spirit, the same Spirit who sealed our own baptisms, and may we see the characteristic fruit of a Spirit-filled community developing in our lives <clears throat> for the benefit of others. In this season where we celebrate nationhood, we acknowledge that your kingdom has no boundaries and that Messiah Jesus is the hope of all the nations, just as Isaiah proclaimed. Therefore, God, ruler of all, we humbly ask that you will give us more of your love of justice, mercy, peace and righteousness. Help our government and all governments to rule in a way that echoes your heart. Help us to treat the poor fairly, rescue those in need, and bring an end to all oppression. In places where the innocent are punished, and wherever injustice rules, move the hearts and minds of those with power and influence, so that the victims of injustice will experience freedom and hope. God of justice, help all those in power to seek compassion, truth, and wisdom. You call us all to be peacemakers in all things, large and small. Help us therefore to seek peace and pursue it with all our hearts, minds, and our resources. And may the whole earth be filled with your glory and abundance. Father God, we thank you for the blessings of life and for the many things we take for granted. We join with those who are celebrating their thanksgiving and joy. And we also join with those who are welcoming good news, new possibilities or exciting new opportunities. Nevertheless, our hearts are at times heavy with concerns. We therefore bring again those who are in need of your wholeness and grace. For those who grieve, or who are ill, or in some kind of difficulty, and are fearful of the future. We pray especially for Robbie, Aggie and John, Liz, Kathleen, Graham, Star and Derek, Judy Peelan, Roger, Shirley, Kathy Honor, and for the men in the boarding house. And so in a moment of silence, let's pray for them and for others we know. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who suffer. Give hope to those for whom courage is failing. Bring peace and joy to those troubled in mind, body, or spirit, and reassure them of your Spirit's presence. And in all things, give us the wisdom to know how to be proactive and when to be patient. Eternal God, whose reign extends from sea to sea, and whose care endures throughout the ages, hear all our prayers through our mediator Jesus Christ, your Son, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For our 
final hymn, I invite you to stand for Shout to the Lord. justice for you and through you, and may the Holy Spirit affirm you as God's beloved. Amen. You may be seated. So this is the other national anthem, the Maple Leaf Forever. 